Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, fine, cool. A lot of familiar faces, that's good. Uh, so I made a mistake. So my presentation is entirely in Bulgarian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I can possibly talk in English while the slides are in um, Bulgarian, or I can just speak in Bulgarian. What do you prefer, guys? <laughs> I can do Albanian, sorry. <laughs> so cool, let's, let's start. Uh, so first, uh, a bit about me. So this is me, I'm kissing a flamingo here. <laughs> That's a flamingo, so yeah. So I have uh, one, two, uh, three kids now. And uh, I'm missing something, a dog. So uh, I'm the typical family guy. Uh, as you might say, um, I started in the gaming industry um, a lot of years ago, actually. So my first thing that I done, uh, done is the first Bulgarian web uh, portal for games. It was called 3D Zone BG. We um, introduced news, reviews, and stuff like that uh, for the big community. Then, of course, I moved to this little guy there. Martin is here. He did it. So this is Gamers Workshop. Does anyone know about Gamers Workshop? Yeah, yeah wow. Last time I, saw the, uh, I said that uh, during the presentation, there were only crickets. So this was back in the day, this was uh, one of the first Bulgarian gaming magazines. Um, and it was pretty hardcore. Then I started my own company and, um, you know, we, we worked with clients like ESL, um, like uh, Intel Europe, BMW, et cetera, Adidas. And we created uh, a social network for gamers. This was during the Facebook uh, boom. And we were trying to look for investors, but back then the economic cl climate and the business climate in Bulgaria wasn't that good. So this whole thing failed. It was called the UGDB. A lot of guys uh, here helped um, back then. And then, we moved to Crytek. We created Arena of Fate. Sadly, it got canceled. And uh, then um, Creative Assembly, Sofia, Creative Assembly show up. So uh, yeah, we're now part of it. And this is my business me. Um, the player me recently got a platinum in Spider-Man. Um, and I stayed, uh, you know, up to 2 a.m. this uh, this night playing uh, Shadow of the Colossus. The remake is awesome, so uh, there's only two bosses left, uh, and I'm playing Greece on the Switch as well. And I'm uh, still looking for Rockstar to, you know, finally fix that HDR bug, uh, so that I can start uh, playing Red Dead Redemption 2, of course. So uh, enough about me. Uh, let's move to Creative Assembly. Uh, so, yeah, this should play, but it, it's not playing for some reason. This also should play. It's not playing for some reason. Let me just check this button. Yeah, so, okay, technical difficulties, yeah. Uh, so, Creative Assembly is a studio with uh, 30 years uh, worth of history. Um, they're responsible for the Total War franchise, as you might be familiar with it. Um, the Total War franchise basically has... Uh, two um, different branches, so to say. First is the historical one, and the second one is the fantasy one, the Warhammer series in collaboration with, uh, with Games Workshop, of course. Um, and actually, Creative Assembly are two studios uh, that are 500 meters of each other. Um, one is responsible for Total War, the other one is the console team. They've worked on Alien Isolation, um, you know, on consoles. And, uh, of course, uh, with Microsoft on, uh, on uh, Halo Wars 2. Um, it's a big studio right now with the Sofia studio where around 550 uh, people uh, working on multiple projects. We have a base of, uh, you know, uh, motion capturing um, in the UK that's one of the best there. Uh, we have a lot of sound rooms for uh, 7.1 surround sound, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, and this is footage from ga the games, obviously. Yeah, it's not playing. Nice, right? Um, yeah, cool. So um, we got um, we joined the Sega family 22 
months ago, 23 actually. Um, and uh, up to this point, our partnership has been, has been kind of good. Um, I had an interview with a potential programmer the other day, and he asked me why I'm not able to read anything about you on the internet. It's like you don't exist. And uh, I'll tell you what's the reason about this. Is the reason is simple, that we were extremely busy with all the stuff that has been happening. Uh, so we have upgraded all of our tech, servers, infrastructure, etc. cetera. Uh, so we um, hired new people with new abilities. Uh, we were able to, to start working and we uh, you know, understood the, the tools of, uh, of CA. Uh, we done ton, tons of uh, you know, trainings, uh, just tons of really. Like uh, we, we did uh, uh, trainings with uh, people that work with uh, double negative in London. We did uh, trainings with people that were uh, working on Lord of the Rings movies. Etc. Etc. is very important for us to um, kind of uh, invest in our employees so that uh, they can reach the next level because we want to aim for that you know next gen um, experience overall. Um, so we were able to produce three uh, three projects during that time. Um, those were completely created in Sofia, which was really cool. And right now we're working on our first standalone title for uh, some time now, which is, yeah, amazing. Like the whole team is really excited about it. So um, our uh, project so far, so this is in part divided. It's a campaign pack for, for Rome 2. We were able to remove the political system of the, the main game and we replaced it with our, our own one. Desert Kingdoms, we replaced, uh, we've added new, uh, you know, female rulers and generals that uh, struck some controversy right there, but we'll talk about that in a second. And Rise of the Republic, uh, which is the third and to this point final um, DLC that we're going to produce for, for Rome 2. We did tons of improvements on the main game. Uh, we added the uh, family, uh, the family tree, which was a fan favorite feature that wasn't present up to this point, and it's kind of a bit scary because uh, you know me as a studio manager, my role is mainly to kind of uh, find out where there's a risk, and uh, you know it will be better if someone tells me, look, there's a risk, uh, don't do it, um, and up to this point, uh, I got you know all the freedom and the entire studio got all the freedom to do whatever we want. It's, it's really scary for me sometimes, but creative people, they really like to push boundaries, so uh, we're letting them do it. So far, it has been great. Might as well, uh, you know, fuck up afterwards, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Cool, so we helped uh, with the UK team, we helped on Warhammer 2, we helped out Rise of the Tomb Kings, um, of course, uh, Curse of the um, of the Vampire Coast, Thrones of Britannia. It was a 50-50 split between the Bulgarian and the UK studio. So if I was a Macedonian, I would probably say that it's our title. Um, so yeah, uh, Three Kingdoms. We, we helped them a lot uh, with that as well, and uh, Total War Arena. Uh, rest in peace. Um, so uh, yeah, we did some level design and some backend work there. So it's all going uh, well so far. And we were in the news, it's PC Gamer, it's Waypoint, this is Vice Media. And uh, this controversy I told you, we kind of, because uh, up to this point, you know, in Rome 2, Cleopatra was like this icon 16 by 16 pixels. It was an auxiliary for Mark Anthony. And we decided it, that it's the right time to introduce Cleopatra as a playable character, you know? She was a part of history, and then we got this new Nazi website. Uh, and the whole thing escalated to the point where our game got review bombed on Steam like crazy. And this is Variety, one of the top blocks for entertainment and uh, movies in the US, uh, basically defending us, wow. That's cool. And another news, yeah, because the team was awesome and we performed great. So that gave us the opportunity to introduce to Sega um, the possibility in Bulgaria 
uh, so that they can move some of their business here. So uh, yeah, it's happening. Sega QA is moving in Bulgaria, which is, uh, which is great, I believe. Uh, it will introduce a lot of new you know, um, places to work, um, which is amazing. I do believe that QA is a very important thing in the, in the gaming industry. It's kind of this entry level where people are still unaware of what do they want to do when they enter the, the gaming industry so they can get into QA and start exploring to see what, uh, what's out there for them, what's the thing that they want to do, which is great. This will give uh, that opportunity to a lot of people some of our best people, I can say, on our team, like designers, uh, programmers, producers, come from QA. So it's a really good thing to be happening to, to that industry. Uh, so a bit uh, about Sega. So Sega started in the 1940s. Actually, it was an American company, first of all. And uh, at one point, they got bought by a Japanese company, blah, blah, blah. Sonic happened, you know. <laughs> The merger with Sega Sami, uh, which was an important thing, and then you know started the Western expansion of of, um, of Sega. Um, they decided they want to pursue that spot in the strategy genre, so they acquired Creative Assembly, they acquired Sports Interactive, Amplitude in France, uh, Relic. It's a very very good developer, and uh, Atlus in the U.S. You know the more Japanese. Um, titles, um, and Sega Searchlight, Two Points Hospital has been recently announced, so that's uh, and released, so that's great. And, uh, you know, uh, Creative Assembly Sofia happened, and we'll see what happens next. So this is, uh, you know, a map of the presence of, uh, of Sega around the world. Oh, thank you, corporate marketing. That's uh, great. It's a great slide, yeah. Um, cool. So, uh, again, Sports Interactive, you know them for Football Manager, of course, CA with uh, Total War, all the titles, Relic, a great studio right now. They're making uh, Age of Empires 4. Uh, Amplitude, the French studio behind uh, Endless Space and Le Legends, and so on. Uh, you know, the Yakuza series, Valkyrie Chronicles, Two Point Hospital, Sonic, of course, and Dragon Crown Pro, yeah. Cool. So uh, those are the key pillars um, of Sega, Football Manager, Company of Heroes, Total War Warhammer, and Historical. Yeah. So the development services in Sofia, it started recently in November. Uh, we're slowly recruiting there, um, and it's a pretty ambitious plan where we're, the idea is to reach uh, 100 plus people in the next 18 months. Um, it will be huge, I believe, for, for the industry here. It will bring a lot of new talent in this industry, so that, that's always good. Uh, and the plan is to have a, you know, world-class QA services here in Bulgaria. So uh, they'll test PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and mobile. So uh, that's pretty much everything about Sega. Uh, we have the boot on the you know, job fair. So you'll be able to get more information there because I'm really not doing this like there's a separate manager and everything. Uh, so back to Creative Assembly, Sofia. So what's, uh, what are we going to do next? Um, our first standalone project, which is cool. And this is possibly, uh, I, I, I shouldn't show you this. Like this is confidential information. Like we were able to skip two years. I'm just so proud of it. Uh, we were able to skip two years from the original plan. And right now we're developing our own title two years prior to, to what was uh, stated in the original plan, which is, which is amazing. So we're working on that game for, for about a year now. We will announce it this year. We can't wait to show you what's happening. Um, it's six times bigger than everything that uh, we've ever done so far, so it's a bit scary. Uh, and uh, it's based on a worldwide known narrative. It, it is amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, so we're 
of course going to monetize it yeah <laughs> yeah and it will be there will be a huge map i've seen it it's playable you can go anywhere it's it's magical it just looks really awesome you'll be you'll be really surprised with what we're doing uh, so we're going to grow up we'll be looking for a lot of new people and i want to announce that we are going to create our own cinematics cutscene team here in bulgaria it makes sense for us since uh, you know we have a mock-up studio in the uk so uh, we want to leverage that and uh, we want to do kick-ass cutscenes here in bulgaria yeah i do believe that that's possible so we're going for from uh, 72 to 100 people that's at least the plan we'll see what what might happen and we'll need a new office space, so that's our new office space. Uh, it's in the business park, it's like five minutes away from our current uh, office space, so the first floor, it's ours. And uh, we had some problems with it. We were supposed to enter in it uh, in December, uh, but then, you know, building sites, uh, construction workers and everything happened. So we have a new date, uh, and that new date is, and this is not playable. Yeah. Yeah, so imagine a huge explosion with a huge logo and it's just bang, it's the 25th of uh January. So that's that's uh that's Friday, that's like this Friday. And I'm uh, a bit nervous because we have to move and it's it's crazy and it's finally happening and I won't have to deal with it anymore, so that's that's always a plus. Uh, so this is the office space, so uh, this side upstairs will be Sega site, this is uh, Creative Assembly, and there are some, uh, you know, few screenshots and renders. We have some uh, very nice raisable desks everywhere. Um, we have some very nice, uh, you know, chairs that will, yeah, uh, be comfortable on your bumps. Uh, and we have a giant hub that I'm calling uh, the, 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 the loft tunnel. Yeah, inside the office, some resting areas, boardrooms, and of course, uh, we are huge fans of uh, Mortal Kombat, so we decided to put five or four arcade machines of it there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and we're also creating, um, you know, a very good facilities when it comes to sound. So we're doing three audio rooms and one live room. They're wor worldwide class level. Like uh, we've tested the, the live room with a rock band. So uh, the sound isolation is pretty dope. So uh, yeah, it's amazing. Cool, so that's, uh, that's it from my side. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to, to mention one thing. As I mentioned, we're moving on, on Friday, so I wasn't able to kind of prepare a proper lecture. I promise to come back uh, next year. So this was a brief presentation of the studio. Uh, sorry if some people are disappointed. Yeah. So any questions, anyone? No one? What kind of people are you hiring? <laughs> Developers. The best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. So uh, right now we're hiring um, producers. We're hiring environment artists, animators. Am I missing something? Game designers, probably? Testers. Yeah, yeah, cool. Testers? Yeah. Go ahead. It, it seems like there's a lot of Western studios expanding into Bulgaria or a lot of new studios starting in the country. Do you think that the talent pool of employees is large enough to satisfy this expansion? Yeah, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, so um, hmm, two things should happen. So the first one is that education and business should go uh, hand in hand with this, you know, because if there is interest from companies to, you know, invest here in Bulgaria, there should be an interest in universities to do the proper programs for, for, for the industry. So that's great. Another thing is that, um, you know, um, we should start uh, gathering people from uh, Europe and from the neighboring countries. I do believe that this is achievable. 
the thing is that Bulgaria is slowly transforming it, uh, itself and mainly Sofia into this kind of point uh, in, the, in Eastern Europe for game development. Uh, we now have uh, a lot of the biggest you know, studios in the industry are here, so that's great opportunity for, for the talent pool. And I do believe that you know, when we train those people, when they get all the knowledge, then they'll have the ability to start their own kind of separate indie projects, which will be great for the industry. I do believe that it's very important for that industry to have that you know, uh, indie community out there, because it, it's the, the thing that innovates, the things that creates the new concepts, and the things that looking for that for the next next uh, next thing that next next hype, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah. There's a, definitely some room for improvement uh, when when we when we talk with with the education on the education side of things. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Um, there's a question from where, Twitch. Where chat. are you? It's just uh, yeah. Over cool. Here, yeah. yeah. Uh, question from Twitch chat. First question, which technologies are you using for development and why Bulgaria? <laughs> because Bulgaria is awesome, why? Yeah. Obviously. So yeah, uh, we're, we have our own uh, proprietary engine called uh, Warscape. So uh, we're using uh, kind of the latest iteration of it uh, with CA zone tools. Other than that, we're using 3ds Max for modeling, Maya as well. For animation, we're only using Maya. Um, you know, we're using uh, um, Substance Painter, Designer, uh, you know, ZBrush, uh, all the latest stuff. And we have that policy that if you come, uh, you know, to me or some of the producers and you say, look, I'm using uh, that tool on personal projects and it will save me like 20% of work, okay, we'll, we'll buy it. You can use it. I, I don't see any reason why we won't do that. So uh, it's just the typical is a typical package that's uh, used everywhere uh, by software and game developers. So it's nothing different apart from the main engine. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, thanks for the lecture. And I'm not sure if you're allowed to speak about this, but uh, from your point of view, what went wrong with Arena of Fate? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so probably we got uh, a bit late to the party, mainly. So, uh, you know, we had... Uh, so League of Legends was there. Wow. Uh, Dota 2 was there, uh, then Blizzard joined the party, and we saw all the other MOBAs that started failing because there were people weren't getting out of League of Legends or Dota. There, those are these huge, you know, communities, gaming communities, that you cannot actually take the people out of them. Um, you know, user, user acquisition costs went up, so um, it was it was a problem. We had a keyword uh, core core game with not that good of a meta game. So that's, you know, uh, the reason. Plus, you know, Crytek had some financial difficulties, so uh, further development wasn't po just wasn't possible. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Is this on? Is this? Yeah. Okay, um, I wanted to ask a question now with computers, you know, uh, getting rapidly developed in the recent years and then being able to compete uh, hardware-wise with consoles. Uh, what do you think the future of uh, console exclusive titles is? Because we see a lot of companies, including Sega, port otherwise exclusive titles to computers such as, you know, Yakuza or Katarin even. Um, yep, yeah. so uh, exclusives are here to stay. Exclusive are the reason why we're buying the hardware. At the end of the day, you can totally see, you know, what Sony is doing right now. They're close to 100 uh, million sales on the PS4. So uh, it clearly had something to do with exclusive. And right now, Microsoft are purchasing studios left and right. So they're preparing for that next generation, and it's going to be a massive clash, you know. Uh, but I'm, I do expect uh, to see a kind of a shift so we, there won't be 
exclusive exclusive but uh, there will be timed exclusive most of them and a lot of the time i think that we'll see deals that are connected with uh, marketing exclusivity rather than the game being exclusive on a given pl platform uh, yeah so that's that's pretty much it thank you That's it, yeah. Cool. Okay, thank I you very much. Yeah, yeah cool. Studio manager of Creative Assembly Sofia. Before you go, yeah, we need our photographer for this. <laughs> More passionately, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you very much for the amazing lecture. I really missed the Gamers Workshop style of uh, communicating.